Yes, I am. Can you hear me? I can hear you. I can see you. Good luck and enjoy. Thank you very much. Um, good morning, everyone. I am Lorraine Moy. Tonight, uh, tonight. Today is a tech talk. Uh, we decided to break from the usual TP bulbs and, well, and geezers and all that to discuss IOPS's transformation committee and our policy. Uh, I am Lorraine Moy. I am a licensed plumber. I am a compliance auditor. I am the CPD manager at PRB, and I am also the transformation committee chairperson. Our discussion today is just regarding the how the transformation. Sorry, excuse me, guys. I'm a plumber, but all these buttons are making me a bit confused right now. I'm just trying to get my screen to cooperate with me. And it's not cooperating. Just give me a second. I've got very, I'm in the sticks at the moment. I mean, I, I reside in Butterworth, which is like between East London and Atlanta, the East UK. So our internet connection is not the greatest. So if there's a bit of delay, I apologize in advance. That's the topic at hand. Um, we, the Transformation Committee came about in 2018. Braden Reynolds sent out a communication to all the, uh, all the committee members of color in the regions and asked for volunteers to start the Transformation Committee. Um, and we then drafted the policy in June of 2018. Uh, it was then ratified by the by NetExec and it is now available on our on the, on the IOPS website. The members of the Transformation Committee are myself, Lorraine Moy, who's Sherwin, who's from KZN, Mahen from KZN, Quapo, who's uh, training at National, Sello, who's uh, helping Chairperson Brendan, the executive director, and Lee Smith. I became chairperson because when they were handing out roles, all the guys were like, who's the legal secretary? Is that not me? Um, I gave that to Sherwin, but I still take notes at every meeting, Monday night. So, that's a part. The, this is just a, a picture of all of us, except for Mahin and Quaco, they were not there on the day. Um, Stella is to your left, Brendan next to him, Sherwin. And I'm the hobbit next to, to Lee Smith. Our mandate as a committee is, is very clear and concise. Is, IOPSA is an inclusive organization. That is what it is. And that's why we want to encourage everyone and anyone to join and become members of IOPSA and become involved in you know, in the different committees in our office in the different regions. Anyone can become a member of the officer as long as you meet the criteria of being a member. Whether you want to be a contractor, whether you want a contractor member, whether associate member or a manufacturer. There are certain criteria that you have to meet and if you don't meet them, that will be communicated to you. As a as a committee there are certain goals that we wanted to achieve. And one of those things was bringing our officer to areas where we've never hosted meetings before. And for us, um, the township meetings are very crucial. We had requested that all the regions host at least two in a year. And the only two regions that have been able to host township meetings are KZN and Cape Town. I was able to attend the KZN Township meeting in Namlazi. It was held in Bilbit in Namlazi. Very well received to the point where at the end of the month uh, we're hosting another one. 
Um, the one in Cape Town went down very well with the plumbers, and they've also requested another one. And we're hoping that by next year, that every region, including my region, border region, will have hosted a meeting in the township, one of the, one of the township areas. The next slide, um, this is Sipo. He's part of the KZN committee. The meeting was probably about 70% vernacular. It was in Zulu, about 70% of it. Um, I was the 30% because I don't have a little Zulu at all. The, um, this is, you'll see that between the aisles, we can't see it, but in between the aisles, it was stacked with chairs and filled with guys that we just wanted um, to understand what our officer was and who, what we do and, and as an organization, what are, we, what are we doing to try and reach certain areas. Um, went down very well, like I said, and we are hoping round two will be even more well received. Um, part of the, the plumbers evening was explaining the ARPL process, which is the advanced recognition of prior learning process. Quite a few plumbers have um, been working in the industry for years and they're still designated rather learner, technical operator. Um, they have the knowledge, they just do not have the qualification to back that up, and we are trying to assist them with the, the ARP, ARPL process. Sanke is um, in charge of that, and she deals with that. She's from the KZN region. Um, our numbers as committee members of um, number of, members of color have increased from 11 to 21 from June of last year to August of this year. In terms of women representation, there's only four women across all the regions. And um, we have also a initiative called Women in Plumbing, which is a group on our Facebook, you know, on our Facebook, if on Facebook. And we're just hoping that we're trying to get more involvement from the women in the in the sector. We have also created a triple BE videos. There's four of them. They're on our YouTube channel. And these videos are geared to make members understand, and non members, because they don't watch the channel, understand what Triple BE is, what the different levels are, um, and how you can improve your score. Uh, since last year, um, our Triple BE level one to four, we've increased from 32 to 172 in August of this year. We encourage members, please, please, Submit their Triple BE certificates. Um, it is a requirement, and we would really like to know what kind of labels we are working with, and we can take from there how to assist. Our next big thing that we like to deal with are community projects. Um, our Officer National uh, assisted uh, WASA with a community project in Ipswich. Ipswich, they, they are a community that they have taken ownership of toilets. The government doesn't assist them. They are the ones who maintain them themselves, and uh, our officer with a few sponsors went in, and some members went to attend to what they thought were ten, but they ended up fixing 24 toilets that day. Um, as a result of that, two WhatsApp employees have received bursaries to undergo ARPL. Um, Border Region, we assisted uh, some burnout hospice. This was all on Mandela Day, 2019. Um, uh, the next slide you'll see a picture of uh, a public chairperson, Stella, uh, with the group of guys, and uh, the president, Lee Smith, um, on the, um, at, at the Mandela Day event. Transformation goals in terms of mentoring of HCI individuals. We find that this is an area that we'd like more involvement with uh, from members. If, and if you are mentoring somebody already, uh, put together a POE and submit it for CPD points. Um, we've got Lee Smith, who's mentoring uh, Bongi Juma. Sela, the Gauteng Chair, is mentoring 10 emerging black contractors. Um, Sela is very active in the Gauteng region. He's got meetings, there's always meetings that he's trying to involve as many people as possible, um, going into areas where that our officer that is not well known in. Um, he's very, very active in that. Um, Mahin as well, KZN, very involved in in that 
in trying to put across the arts uh, or mandate as an officer. Uh, Nick Chabet is, um, he is an influence sparkle and uh, Daniel Duda in terms of the training. Um, in terms of stats for training uh, and black licensed plumbers, we have an increase from 1,964 in June of last year to 2,496 in August of this year, which is from a 38.9% to 41%. And these, this is due to efforts from our officer encouraging um, plumbers to register, the plumbers to qualify plumbers to become licensed plumbers. And PRB, uh, also with assessments, what they're doing is that they are allowing translators in to, to assist the guys to train with their assessments. Um, in terms of training projects that we have with the different uh, private and government stakeholders, we currently have 97.6 black, 2.4% um, white, and of that, we've got 53.6 are females and 6.4 are males. And what's happened is that the males have slowly but surely dropped out of these programs and the females are remaining. So it just goes to show that we are coming for you. Well, as women. Um, we also, as I after, we, you know, we've, got a, we've got a very firm stance on insensitive posts. Um, discrimination on all on all platforms. Um, we do not tolerate discrimination at all and any intensive post on our social media or any platform that involves us, we will have them removed. In the past year, we had three posts. The one was so severe, the individual had to get a final written warning um, because of just the severity of the post. We have a complaint procedure, um, should you, any member, feel they're being discriminated um, or there's something that they um, they want to report to us as a committee, as a transformation committee, we go to the complaints portal on the IOPSA website and uh, from there we will, it will then be sent to, well, you have to print out a form, fill in the form, send it to IOPSA, they, they send it to us as a committee and then we will then this discuss it disciplinary and take it from there. And what it happens will keep you in the loop of what's happening. Um, just, and I've kind of barreled through this. I'm very, very nervous because I can't see anybody. I'm just too able to see my audience, so very humbling. Um, thank you all for your time, all 195 of you. Wow. Yesterday I only had three. So thank you very much for your time. I highly appreciate it. And just in terms of transformation, um, more things will be communicated in, in due course. But if you want to have a look at our transformation uh, policy, it's on the website. You can download it on the uh, OPSA website. Thank you again for your time. If, are there any questions? Sean? All right. Perfect, Lorraine. We, we do have a question here. I'm not sure if this will be for you or for Stevia in the background, but the question reads, why do we have to pay for the plumber's evenings? For example, the one held in Somerset West yesterday, which was hosted by mm -hmm. Vortex Sani Sanitary Wear. To me, it looked mm -hmm. like a marketing strategy for their products. Okay. Um, can I, Steve, can I pass it over to you, please? All right, so let's see if, if Steve Good can morning, hear Morning, everybody. Us. Yeah, I can right. hear you. Can you hear me? Perfect. Here we we can hear you clearly. Yeah, I think in terms of the one that's in Somerset West, I think um, there has been discussion in terms of the IOPSA meetings, <coughs> which um, it has been looked at in terms of those that are not members that attend are, are getting the value of attending the meetings, etc. So therefore, it has been agreed by some of the regions where they will put a cost to some of the meetings in terms of those non-members attending. So I'm not exactly sure of what the story was at Somerset West or why it was conceived as a marketing type of thing. I'm not too sure. Um, I don't have the info. I wasn't there last night. But I know it has been a decision made in some regions where um, it's just felt that the members who are contributing to IOPSA and all of what uh, IOPSA does in terms of the membership fees, 
um, where they they just felt that uh, there are individuals that continuously come along and obtain all the benefits and everything else that goes with it at no cost. So um, if there was any other concerns, I can certainly send it through, but it's not something that hasn't happened before. All right, perfect. Then another question we've got here reads, how do you accommodate the Western and Northern Cape colored community whose first language is Afrikaans? All of your communication is Afrikaans. You do not cater for our language in transformation. Can you repeat that question, please? All right, so I'm reading it for verbatim here. How do you accommodate okay. the Western and Northern Cape colored community whose first uh -huh. language is Afrikaans? All your communication is Afrikaans. You do not cater for our language in transformation. Would I be able to get uh, that person's details and uh, I'll reply to their we'll reply to their question? All right, no, perfect. That's fine. All right. I think um, also, I'm Sean. Sure. Sorry, just in terms of that one. Um, yeah, I, I, as I say, I attend meetings all over the country, and in, in many cases, they are you know bilingual in terms of how they delivered. Um, so, you know, if a question is asked in Afrikaans or whatever the case may be, the guys will answer. But 99% of our presentations are done in, in the format of uh, being in English or whatever the case may be. All the documentation is in, in English, but they are meetings that are, uh, if we go down to the Free State, for example, where um, Rudy and the guys do such a great job, most of those meetings are held in Afrikaans. So um, I'm not sure about the Northern Cape in terms of where that is, but if they can get the details through to... Uh, uh, Lorraine, I'm sure she'll be able to pick it up and um, run with that. All right, perfect. The next question I've got here reads, is it possible to register with IOPSA without a public liability insurance or is it compulsory? Um, that is compulsory. There are certain criteria that are set out by IOPSA and um, unfortunately if you do not meet them, you can't become a member. Uh, public liability is one item that is non-negotiable. I think in terms of that, Sean, well done, Lorraine, in terms of answering, yeah, it is one of those criteria that we're using. Um, you know, for us, in order of our IOPSA, uh, to put that out to the public is that you're using a compliant company, a, a company that has all of those public liabilities, et cetera, et cetera, that are applicable. Um, public liability under correction has not a huge cost, and it's fairly easy to get hold of. But I think it's just for us to convey the professionalism to to the consumer who we're driving to use an IOPS a member that they actually have all of those checks and balances in place. So yes, one of those criteria that's required. All right, perfect. And I have got another question here. Reads: How is the apprenticeship process done? I have someone who wants to do apprenticeship with your company. I think uh, in terms of that, uh, Sean. Sorry. Um, yeah, if the individual sends the details through to, to Lorraine um, or, you know, through to IOPSA, then, um, you know, our training officer, Nick or, or Kwakwa, will be able to assist in terms of that. So it wouldn't be an apprenticeship under IOPSA, but um, they would be able to direct you in terms of exactly what is required, how you go about it, and what those uh, T's and C's are in terms of that individual. All right. Perfect. And then we have just got a, a follow up to one of the previous um, questions reads. Um, is that not what the PRB registration fees are to attend the meetings? And the uh, no, Sean, I think where the confusion comes in, there is no register. Your registration fees are exactly that with PIRB. Uh, PIRB will register you, monitor you, give you your license or your designation or whatever the case may be. Bearing in mind that IOPS and PIRB are two separate entities, um, you know, your registration or your with PIRB is just that. It's a registration. Uh, you are not a member of IOPSA because of your being registered with PIRB. Um, IOPSA will facilitate training and bring uh, training materials, host events, etc., cetera, etc., cetera, of which the membership companies contribute towards IOPSA to be able to fulfill that mandate, to be able to deliver meetings, uh, bring people to the fore, uh, training, the webinars, etc. So um, certainly not. Um, IOPSA evenings are 
structured through the IOPS and regional committees and uh, what they do, but certainly not a uh, licensed plumber can certainly attend uh, in terms of certain circumstances, but it doesn't give you the right to be a member of IOPS if you're registered with PIRB, unless you work for a company that is a member of IOPS. Right, perfect. And then I have got another question here, which I am going to have to translate for you guys. It means, uh, or it reads, can can people still study plumbing theory, or has that fallen away? Uh, in terms of, look, if you go down to the Western Cape and some of the, you know, the the training schools that are there, they certainly still do their their N1, N2, N3 in terms of their theory. Some of the colleges that are there, and the new training material. Um, I'm speaking just from what the, the info that Nick's got is that um, the current trade that has been changed now with the new training and trade tests, et cetera, it will incorporate theory and practical. So that is in, and I'm under correction, I think it started now, where the new apprentices and learners going into the system will have both theory and uh, practical training in terms of their curriculum. All right, perfect. And then we have got another question here. It reads, uh, what about foreign nationals? They operate here under asylum and temp work permits. Why are they allowed to register with IOPS and PIRB? Um, okay, first and foremost, I think with foreign nationals, okay, there is criteria in terms of what is required to be a licensed plumber and that they basically either have to go through the ARPL process, sorry, not the ARPL, they actually go and be assessed and done. Uh, those criteria are taken and checked. And if you were from Australia, for example, and you had an overseas uh, qualification, uh, you could come in and then you go through that due process. They are not, as far as I'm aware of, uh, just simply registered because they were a plumber in Australia or the UK or whatever they come from. They have to meet that specific criteria and have to go through the formal trade test to be registered as a uh, plumber in South Africa. Uh, there are individuals from other countries that, that, um, that do work and trade in uh, South Africa and uh, they either work under the supervision of a licensed plumber or they're registered as a operator or technical operator or whatever the case may be. But if there is such an individual that you know of and it has gone through that way and it hasn't followed that, that process, then just bring it to our attention. All right, perfect. Well, that is all of the questions I have got here on my list. Um, all right, another one has just popped up, right? It says, why do we have to watch the webinars if we did not, if if we did our theory and qualified and have the SANS codes? All right, uh, Steve, would you like <laughs> to take that one or would you like me to give a, what I can answer there? Yeah, well, I think in terms of the webinars, Sean, and you can just add if I'll leave anything out. I think the key thing for us is that, you know, this portfolio, the way in which we deliver this now um, goes back to a good couple of years ago where, um, you know, we weren't getting to the plumbers and everything else. So through the webinars and the training, if, you know, if you're comfortable, nobody has, to, you don't get forced to attend those webinars. Um, it's not a compulsory, but if you feel and there are others out there that um, are not quite too sure. And we see it, through, see it through the audits and the processes of what we do. Um, so therefore, we see a need, for example, for training on geysers or drainage or whatever. So therefore, we put these things together to accommodate for individuals that can't get to centralized meetings or where this is being done. So that's really the basis of where it is. And you're certainly not forced. If you're comfortable with uh, geyser standards and you have them, etc., that's fine. Um, but there are others out there that aren't, and therefore we, we're trying to meet the, the, the needs of what we see within industry at the moment. Is Sean your side? Steve, I think you I think you pretty much covered that um, completely. All right then, but then that is all of the questions we have got here this morning. Um, so I am going to go ahead and end the session off now. Lorraine, um, would you like to say anything? Um, no, that's it from me. Thank you very much for everybody for attending today, all 200 of you. I really appreciate it. Well done. All right, perfect. All right, guys, so then a big thank you just to Lorraine for taking the time out to actually prepare the session for us um, and to present it. Thanks, Steve, for being there in the background. Um, your guidance is always um, beneficial. Right, and then, guys, thank you so much for taking the time out to actually join us this morning. Uh, we have run 
we have used up almost all of our 30 minutes and I'm glad we had a productive conversation at the end there. I am going to go ahead and end the session off now guys. Just again, big thanks to Heat Tech for helping us bring these uh, sessions to you guys. And I am going to go ahead and end the session off now again. Guys, thanks so much and enjoy the rest of your week. Bye guys.